while Kenyan shares rising for a second straight day in yesterday's session. And that as investors bet on uh, Uchumi declaring a dividend, that offering bulk of the support to the markets yesterday. What are you making of the overall performance by the NSE 20? Well, uh, we're heading towards the 3400 uh, resistance point, which if we do cross, then uh, I, I believe we will be out of the woods and we could see some uh, good upside. However, this is still uh, debatable because uh, last time we tried to get past 3400 on the index, um, the market quickly uh, corrected downwards. Right, uh, the last two days we've seen 0 0.8 uh, and 0 0.84 on the NSC20 index up, up, upside. And uh, as you say, Uchumi has contributed quite a bit. Uchumi has been uh, one of the best performers this month and uh, it could be one of the best performers this year. Mm -hmm. Looking at catalysts for, these, uh, for this market specifically, Alistair, I mean, how much impetus is being given by the kind of earnings reports that are filtering through? Yesterday was uh, certainly a busy day with Total Kenya, uh, Ati River Mining and then CFC Insurance bringing their financial reports to the table. I mean, uh, a lot of the companies, uh, save for Total yesterday, most, most companies are reporting very strong, very uh, robust earnings, even on the back of a, of a very difficult year, which is what we had in 2011. So uh, this is really giving some support to, to the market at present. And uh, investors are seeing that uh, these companies have been able to be resilient in times of hardship. So uh, Arthur Evo Mining, for instance, had a 37% increase in turnover. This is a uh, fairly. Um, this is impressive, and uh, as much as the dividend was not very high, the company is still being a little bit conservative, given their expansion plans. Mm -hmm. uh, the 2013 announcement of a convertible bond, however, could dilute uh, shareholders, and that's why possibly yesterday's uh, announcement did not affect the price. Let's put the spotlight on CFC Insurance because that company really coming to the market with what seems like on a headline basis stellar numbers. It's doubled its 2011 profits and that helped by a 33% rise in gross premium revenue. Has that been as a result of more customers being brought on board or higher prices that are managing to be passed through to the consumer, Alistair? I think I would attribute uh, CFC's increased turnover more on uh, aggressive uh, business and looking out for more business. So I think the, the company has been able to score uh, more on customer numbers as, aside from uh, just increasing uh, pricing. So uh, they, they reported 33% increase in uh, revenues. I don't think that, that alone, that could uh, only have come from a price increase. The company has uh, been trying to be more efficient in, in terms of uh, their operations. And now we saw the full impact of CFC Life uh, Assurance uh, impact on, on the company's financials because uh, it, it, they factored in 12 months of CFC Life, eight months of heritage. I think uh, a lot of this came from their life side and uh, they were a bit more conservative on their investments mm -hmm. and did not get hard hit as, as much as other insurers on the on the investments on on uh, securities would you be positioning yourself within the insurance market because cfc is certainly showing resilience for a sector which faces high interest rates on the one hand and then inflation as well which has come to bear on the average kenyan consumer it may be a tough call uh, correct you say that uh, in inflation is 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 a, is a factor that these companies need to consider very strongly uh, going into this year However, we see uh, in inflation rates uh, coming down as the year progresses. So this could be uh, why uh, CFC could be a, a very good bet, especially given uh, the fact that they were able to return such profit uh, after a difficult year. Now, the stage is set for them to really shine in, in 2012, given uh, that the economy seems to be stable. And uh, with rates coming down, there could be a little more income available for for individuals to invest in uh, such products. Well, these perhaps results that some South African investors will be keeping an eye on as well, and that with South Africa's Liberty Holdings majority owned by uh, Standard Bank has a controlling uh, stake in the company, so certainly peaking interest on this end. In the meantime, let's move on to some uh, news headlines that have been making their way across Kenya this morning. I mean, IFC in a deal to fund Equity Bank to the tune of 8.3 billion shillings, and this is a loan agreement mm -hmm. as Equity Bank seeks to expand its lending portfolio in the SME and agribusiness sectors. Alistair, what have you made of this move and possible partnership that's come to the fore? 
Well, equity has been a very big beneficiary of this kind of uh, funding, uh, not only from IFC but from other lenders. And, uh, but equity, again, is a good target for such funds because of, uh, number one, they are, they are among the banks with the biggest client base and they are focusing very much on helping the SMEs, especially now in a, a very, coming off a very tough uh, economic times when most banks are, were retracting from uh, lending to, to these lower, the, the, the smaller businesses. Mm -hmm. Equity has been very aggressive and uh, believes that uh, their, their loan portfolio uh, could be very well placed for, for this year. So I think they're going to benefit very greatly from this new uh, funding from IFC. And uh, they, they're also going to probably take some of this money into uh, the rest of East Africa. They have a very big footprint now in East Africa and uh, they're growing into Rwanda. So yeah. possibly this could have advised uh, IFC in, in deciding on Equity Bank given that they want to fund a lot more uh, in sub-Saharan Africa this year. Alistair, to what extent do we read this as the possibility of the beginning of a trend which has seen banks preferring to look for funds from international financiers and that being seen as a reaction to the high cost of borrowing caused by the upward revision to interest rates we've seen in Kenya itself? Well, local money uh, is, is expensive at the moment, so it, it could be the start of uh, a trend which we could see for most of uh, the first half of this year. Right now, uh, borrowing from the local, local market is a, bit, is, a, is a bit high, so it, it, it's a very informed decision. Its uh, exchange rate has been has stabilized, so the exposure to volatility on exchange is not going to be a very big risk for these banks yeah. in borrowing from outside. So I think uh, we could see the trend uh, follow uh, from other banks taking, taking the same.